If you see me in the corner crying between a stack of books, yeah, that's why. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are seeing this video, then that means that you probably know that I have hit 10,000 subscribers. I feel like that is probably my first big, whatever you consider big, YouTube milestone. And I cannot be more thankful for all of you that have subscribed to me. But obviously there's a lot more new faces here in the Ella Rose Reads family. So I thought that I would do a little bookish Q&A, answer a couple of your questions, just so we can get to know each other a little bit better. Because I feel like, as I said, there's so many new people that have come. They might not have watched my older videos. I actually did ask over on Instagram for your questions. I'm gonna keep them anonymous, but I did get obviously quite a few questions sent in. And before we start, I do wanna quickly say that these questions are both gonna be book related and lifestyle style related we are going to get on with it so the first question that was submitted is where are you from and I feel like you can probably hear by my accent that I am from London UK and I've lived here my entire life what is your favorite book genre so if you are an avid watcher of my channel then you would probably know that I read predominantly romance books I love romance books they are my awesome favorite literally my jumper says romance reader but I do obviously read mainly romance books I do love a thriller I do I've recently delved into fantasy a little bit more as well but those are like my top three I suppose I don't really delve too much out of those sort of genres but mainly romance and the next part of that question was how did I get started reading books so I honestly don't remember a stage of my life where I started to read I feel like I've read here and there sporadically throughout my whole life really. I even started off with like Jacqueline Wilson books. I started off with Biff and Chip and if you're a UK girly you will know exactly what I'm talking about. I remember reading them in school then I went on to the fairy books then I went on to a girl online and all like the YouTuber books and stuff like that and then it sort of did die down I won't lie. It definitely died down between probably GCC time and A level time but I do remember reading books during that period just maybe like one a year or whatever whereas obviously now I'm in the hundreds <laughs> and I will say this is not an ad but I do have a discount code for literature stitches which is where I got this jumper from and that is Ella Rose 10 if you want 10% off. The next question is probably one of my favourite ones and it was why or how did you start your booktube channel? How is a little bit of an easier question I suppose because I had already had another YouTube channel previously I'm not gonna link it I'm not gonna say anything about it it's not even that cringe it was like four or five years ago so I was younger than I was now and I don't know it's just a little bit cringy I suppose I've always sort of done YouTube from as long as I can remember I think I made my YouTube account probably a bit too young probably when I was like nine years old and I used to post like Barbie videos on there obviously they've all been deleted now I wish I privated them but yeah I've always done it but why I started a booktube is probably because I wanted somewhere to express my creativity in a long form kind of way. I feel like I'm all for Instagram, I'm all for TikTok, but there's only so much you can put out there because it is, it does tend to be like a shorter sort of thing. Whereas over on here I can post a three hour long video if I want to. Not that I ever have, but if I wanted to I could. And I feel like there's a little bit more freedom as to what you can post. And also I just really enjoy making content. The next question is, is there a genre that you will never read? And obviously I did say that I mainly do romance, I mainly do thrillers and fantasy, but I don't think there's anything that I wouldn't read. I've read non-fiction, I've read horror, I've read sci-fi, I've read sort of a broad aspect of genres. And I don't think there's anything that I wouldn't read. I'll probably find something that I don't like, but for now I feel like I would be open to anything. There's not much that I'm like, I would never read that. This is another one of one of my favourite questions, and it was, if your memory was wiped, what would be the first book that you'd reach for again? So my first answer would have been my favourite book ever, and that would be Magnolia Park's The Long Way Home. But I feel like if my memory was wiped, I wouldn't remember anything from Magnolia Parks and Daisy Hates. So going into the third of a series probably isn't the best decision. So if I'm thinking like interconnected standalone, where you can read it without knowing anything else, I think I would pick Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez because that has literally become one of my favourite books literally in this year. And I love it so, so much. I feel like if my memory was wiped, that's where I'd want to go. So the next question is, what book got me into reading? So obviously, as I said earlier, I never didn't read. However, the book that sort of sparked that enjoyment again into me in around 2018, 2019 was Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. And if I didn't say that one, I would say Cat Clark's Entangled. No, Cat Clark's The Lost and the Found. That was great book and I read that one when I was around 16 I think so that sort of like sparked the this era of my reading the next question is what 
does a typical day look like for you? And how do I read so much? And it says love you, love you too. Thank you for your question. My typical day, I kind of think it varies on the day depending on if I'm editing, filming, if I have work and stuff. So Monday to Friday, I have a job and I'm a receptionist and I do that from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. So I only work part-time, I work 25 hours a week. So that is sort of like the morning part of my day. The reason I only work part-time is because I've literally just graduated uni within the past month. I think it was a month ago tomorrow that I graduated. For right now, I'm not ready to move on to a full-time job because I'm doing the YouTube thing. And obviously because of that, it takes up a lot of my time. And while it's got to the point with my YouTube where I can work part-time and do YouTube, there's no point me trying to get a full-time job and passing up this opportunity because YouTube is like the one thing, if it went full-time, then I'm doing it full time if that makes sense. I don't know, it's just, it's a little bit weird because my schedule can vary depending on the day and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's go to work, come home, do YouTube things, edit. Sometimes I'm doing 12 hour days. If I start work at 9 a.m., I'm not finishing until 9, 10 p.m. with editing and stuff like that as well. I'm editing and filming longer than I was at work. This question I thought was quite interesting and it's, is reading when you're with company quite rude? Arguably, see this is what me and Riley argue about all the time, right? So if his family are coming over to see his parents and then I'm reading a book on the sofa, is that rude? He says it is because we've got company, but my argument is they're not here to see me. And I know that sounds really bad because obviously I won't read when they're sort of like in the room and stuff. But if it gets to the point where they're like here all day, I'm happy to go upstairs and just read my book. If you're not blatantly ignoring them, I don't see why it's rude. I think it depends on the person, depends what they're there for. If it's someone that you see multiple times a week, then no, I don't see why it would be rude because you get to see them all the time. If it's someone that you haven't seen in a while, then fair enough because you need to spend time with them. And also I'm one of them people where I can read a book, someone can speak to me and I'll know exactly what they said. Whereas Riley is one of them people, he'll be reading his book and then I'll speak to him and he'll be like, huh? Because he won't understand what I'm saying. So I think if you can have that balance of being able to talk to someone and read a book at the same time, I don't see why it'd be too rude as long as you're not shrugging them off. I don't know, it's weird. It's a very, I think it depends on the situation. What is your favourite book that you've read so far in 2024? So, I feel like the best book that I've read so far in 2024, I did mention them both earlier. Obviously I said that I would read Yours Truly again if my memory is right. I also mentioned my favourite book ever, Magnolia Park's The Long Way Home, and I feel like I would have to put it to that. I have read some amazing books this year so far. I started the Addicted series, which I've become really obsessed with. I've started the Boys of Tommen series that I've got obsessed with. And I've read various standalones actually that I've really, really enjoyed, that I've read 4.5 and above so I have read some good books this year but I feel like if I had to label it I would have to put it down to Magnolia Park's The Long Way Home that's my favorite book ever and it deserves so much hype and now we're going to backtrack and go to the worst book that I've read this year I don't as I said I've read some great books this year I don't think there's been one that I would consider the worst only because it's just books that I just didn't I feel like if it's not my cup of tea, why would I say it's the worst? Because for someone else it could be the best. But I think if I had to put a label on it, it would be Summer People by Julie Cohen. Because I actually DNF that in a reading vlog actually. I think it was in my blind dates with books video. And I got to the point where I was like, I got to like over 100 pages in. I was like nearly halfway and I was like, I can't do this anymore. I cannot physically do it. But it was only because I didn't enjoy that style of writing and stuff at the time. How long is my TBR? So if you actually watched a video from I think around two weeks ago I went through every single book on my physical TBR so definitely check that out if you haven't I did count that I had over 220 books on my physical TBR which is a lot and I'm slowly crying about it if you see me in the corner crying between a stack of books yeah that's why can you rank Emily Henry books in order of your favorites now I'm gonna do this off the top of my head number five you and me on vacation or people we meet on vacation then and I know you're all gonna kill me I'm gonna say a happy place because I went into it thinking it was something that it wasn't. I thought it was going to be like a happy, cutesy little summer romance and it wasn't. So it wasn't that the book was bad, it's just that I went into it thinking it was different. So it just wasn't the vibe at the time. Then I'll say funny story, actually really did enjoy that one. Then I'm going to say Beach Read because I know that that's everyone's favourite Emily Henry book but that is definitely my second favourite which leaves Book Lovers as number one. Book Lovers is one of my favourite books even to this day, even though I read it over two years ago. It is still, I think about it all the time and I love it so much. This next question is, how many pages do I normally read in a day? So obviously, as I said, my schedule sort of changes daily depending on how much editing and like other stuff that I've got to do, whether Riley's got basketball and stuff like that. But on an average, I would like to say that I read average if I calculated between my 
least amount of pages and my most amount of pages in a day it should average to be around 40 to 50 pages a day and that's on a day where i'm a little bit busy i still want to get some reading done before bed but realistically it can literally range between zero pages to like 200 pages it fully depends on what book i'm into what if i have a reading vlog due what mood i'm in what i'm doing that day so there isn't really like a set amount it's just the fact that if i had to calculate it probably be between 40 and 50 pages a day so we've got a more personal question now and that is what was your engagement like so in 2022 actually just before i'll do a little bit of a backstory about my relationship so me and riley met when we were four years old and childhood friends to lovers and we went to the same school same primary school secondary school nursery sixth form university like we've grown up together and he went into the year below me and i went into the year above him because our birthdays fall on different years but we are only seven months apart but school years we're in different school years he was always just behind me i was always just sort of like going up a year up a year and up a year and he was always just in the year below and then when we went into sixth form i decided to stay on an extra year and drop back into his year by my own choice and then when we were outside our head teacher's office he spoke to me for the first time like didn't think anything of it just like oh hi are you okay like i haven't seen you in a while and then the rest is history but that means that in 2022 we flew to la palma which is one of the canary islands and we were on a cliff's edge at sunset and he proposed and he was very very nervous i said why were you nervous you literally knew i was gonna say yes but we got together in 2019 so we've been together five years this year and we got engaged at age 19 i'm now 22 and we are going happy and healthy and strong as ever, which is great. And a lot of people, I had quite a few questions on Riley actually. People are quite interested in that side of things. I feel like, because I'm not like a personal lifestyle kind of content creator and I'm more just focused on books. People are like, so who's Riley? Like, what's going on? And I always feel like I have to say my fiance Riley, even though most of you know that Riley is my fiance. It's just that I feel the need to clarify every time. But maybe now, now you all know who he is, I can just say Riley. <laughs> My next question is, have I ever wanted to write a book? If yes, what genre would it be? So I have wanted to write a book and I actually put on my Instagram story the other day, I went through my cupboard and I found the first three or four chapters of a book that I was gonna attempt to write when I was around 14 years old. Obviously, that went nowhere and it was very very bad when I read it through. I was like, oh my god, what is this? It was in third person, it was like a whole thing. But I have always wanted to write a book, it's just that I don't feel like personally I have a big enough brain in this head of mine or an original enough idea. I feel like there's so many people like I have an idea for a book but I just don't want to do it. I'm like I want to do it but I don't have an idea for a book. It would obviously fall under the romance category in some way because I feel like that's personally how I would be best and also obviously as I mentioned I did speak you through sort of like mine and Riley's relationship there is obviously a lot of that that I didn't include that would make a great book I feel like I would be open to writing mine and Riley's love story however it literally would be a knockoff version of a very very popular book because when I read that book I'm not going to say what book it is but when I read that book I was so enamored into it that I was I related to it I it was crazy that I was like, I want to, I would love this. This is literally my story. And if I wrote it saying that it was my story, people would say, well, you're copying that book though. So I can't do it. Do you know what I mean? Even though it's exactly identical, I would love to, but I don't know, maybe, maybe one day. But I do think that that is everything for the questions. Obviously I'm always open to any questions. So if you ever find anything that you want to ask me or there's anything that you are interested in or want to know more about, then definitely comment it down below. Send me a DM on Instagram. Make sure to follow me on all of my other socials as well another little reminder i know that this isn't an ad but i am wearing my literature stitches jumper use code lrose 10 for 10 percent off and i hope you enjoyed getting to know me just that little bit more i feel like i've just waffled your ears off for way too long but here we are but if you did enjoy this video then give it a thumbs up thank you so much again for 10,000 subscribers i honestly cannot thank you enough but i will let you know that there is a reading vlog coming where i celebrate you so stay tuned for this weekend because there's good things coming. <laughs> I love you guys lots and I will see you in my next one. Bye!